Professor Carter contributes regularly to public education and debate on scientific issues. His public commentaries draw on his knowledge of the scientific literature and a personal publication record of more than 100 scientific papers. Professor Carter strives to provide critical and dispassionate analysis based upon scientific principles, demonstrated facts and knowledge of the scientific literature. Bob is also an enthusiastic and valued and a foundation member of the Australian Environment Foundation and a very good friend. I would like to welcome Bob uh, here today to speak on global warming, in particular an analysis of the facts of climate change in a balanced context. Thank you so much, Bob. Thank you, Jennifer. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and, and thank you to Max and the AEF particularly for the invitation to speak to you. A few things I'd like to make clear at the outset. Uh, I'm as much in favour of looking after our planet and the environment as apparently John Newcomb wishes to appear to be. I'm not, however, in favour of squandering precious wealth on futile feel-goodery like the Kyoto Protocol, especially given what Chris has already referred to, which is the fact that several billion people on the planet still lack clean drinking water, adequate sanitation and cheap power. Like most climate rationalists, I'm called a climate sceptic. I'm not a sceptic except in the sense I'm a scientist. All scientists are sceptics. I'm actually an agnostic about global warming, a, a human cause global warming. I have no axe to grind. Let the facts fall where they may. The third point in introduction, science is not about consensus. Science is about testing hypotheses. The hypothesis of the day that we've already started to test by Chris is that a human carbon dioxide emissions are causing dangerous climate change. That's the hypothesis that's in the newspaper every day. Note this is not a hypothesis about pollution. Carbon dioxide is not a pollutant. It's not about sulphur dioxide, nitrous oxides, particulate carbon and so on. They're all things we should worry about and deal with. The global warming hypothesis we're testing is not about pollution. And fourthly and lastly, the public debate is bedeviled by a lack of context and a lack of balance. And I'm going to address both those points in this talk, um, and I'm going to test that hypothesis interwoven throughout the talk. So I'd like to start by asking a question, is, is it warming or not? And I look at them and I say, it depends. <laughs> they look back at you and they think, you smart ass. I'm not in the least being clever. Profoundly, it depends. Here's what it depends on. This is data from ice cores in Greenland for the last 50... Oh, sorry, I'm going to have to get used to this. For the last 15,000 years. So here's 16,000 years ago here. This is the last ice age. Here we are today, modern time here. And the red curve is temperature measured from those ice cores. And you see it was significantly colder than today back here. Uh, and then it's warming up until about 10,000 years ago. And about 10,000 years ago, we embark on this period of time geologists call the Holocene, where broadly it's about the same temperature as today. So the question is, is global warming happening? Well, let's stick a line through there. And there it is from 16,000 years ago. It's warming since 16,000 years BP. Oh, the warmers are right. If you fit that line, it's warming for the last 16,000. It's not a very sensible line to fit. So let's fit the line now between uh, the last 10,000 years, the, the warm period we live in called the Holocene. And surprise, surprise, it's cooling. So for 10,000 years, it's been cooling. Well, Mr. Howard's focused on a slightly shorter period of time than 10,000 years, so you wouldn't get anywhere talking to him about that. So let's come down to the last 2,000 years, the, the Christian era, this little box in here, which I've exploded up, and we'll fit a line, and lo and behold, it's still cooling, and it's cooling at a faster rate. Hmm. Well, 2,000 years, that's still too long. So let's take the last 700 years. It's called the Little Ice Age because... We see here it warmed and cooled and warmed again. This is the period we call the one no change at all. Stasis since 700 years ago. And now we get to what the warmers want us to get to. Look at that going up like a rocket. We were right. Global warming's happening. But Chris showed us this. There's a little bit of a problem. If we go to the last 10 years, sorry, the last eight years, it's stasis again, like the little ice age. There's another problem, which is if we 
uh, look at all those lines, they're statistically significant except for lines 5 and 6. Why are 5 and 6 not statistically? Because they're too short a period of time over the data set. There's plenty of places where the temperature's going up at this rate, back here, back here, back here. This is absolutely not unusual. So, answer it yourself. You've got the newspaper report now. He says to you, is warming happening or not? It depends. So now we've just uh, looked at the last 16,000 years. Now let's reduce that for a moment to the last five, uh, 5,000 years. And we've plotted it in BC and AD, in Christian period. The green stripe is the modern late 20th century warm period. You see temperature does indeed warm here. And these data are the same ice core data we've just seen exploded up a bit. But we also see there's this warm period here called the medieval warm period. And lo and behold, all the green stripes are previous warm periods. There's nothing unusual about the late 20th century warm period. You hear it said, but it's bigger than it is, bigger change, more warmer today than in the last thousand years. Well, the first answer to that is, so what? What's so special about a thousand years? It's a, a blink of an eye in geological climatic terms. But the second more important answer is that if you look back to several thousand years, which is the minimum period you need, uh, you see here these warmer periods regularly spaced and you also see that the last three of them, the previous three, are all warmer than the modern period. There's nothing, absolutely nothing unusual about the magnitude of, of temperature on the planet today. Furthermore, if we recall through these beautiful paintings, amongst other things, European paintings, that between the warm periods we have these cold periods. This is the Little Ice Age I've already referred to before. If you think that global warming might be damaging, and I believe I have heard a faint rumour some people think it might be, then you want to try global cooling. This will wipe out the granary crops of the world if it happens again, and it will happen again, it's only a matter of when. And the solar physicists right now are predicting we're probably, not probably, there is a good chance we are heading into another little ice age in the next 20 or 30 years. Did you read that in the Melbourne Age yesterday? Okay, well, so we looked at 20,000 years worth, we looked, narrowed that down at 5,000 years worth. Now as a geologist I can start to relax because we're going to look at a reasonable period of time. And here it is, we're going back now almost half a million years, 400,000 years. And here's our modern Holocene warm period. And you'll note that today's here, and just a few thousand years ago, it was a degree or so, here's the scale, it was a degree or so warmer than today. Well, climatologists used to call that the Holocene climatic optimum. Nice place to be. You know, wonderful. Polar bears loved it and all that. You can't use that word now. It's disappeared from the vocabulary. Couldn't possibly be a climatic optimum because it's warmer than today. Warm equals bad. If I was to take a book, the room at the end, on the way out, looking at that graph now, 400,000 years of Earth history, here's the little warm periods, the rest of it, 90% of the time, it was colder than today, and mostly much colder. What's going to happen next? How many people would give me a bet on the way out of the room? It's going to get warmer next. Not one of you. Because it's not going to get warmer next, it's going to get colder. It's not a matter of if again, it's a matter of when. That's a very difficult question to answer, but it's certainly going to happen. Okay, well, you've... Um, Heard it said that the polar bears are going to die out if the temperature goes up another degree or two. Well, have another look at this slide. Uh, this, um, sorry, this, this peak up here is five degrees warmer than today in this interglacial a few hundred thousand years ago. You know those pictures you see on SBS and ABC? You don't watch SBS and ABC, do you? God. But if you do, every week regularly you'll see a picture of a polar bear on nice flow somewhere or other. They're imaginary. They're virtual reality. They create, can't be there. They couldn't possibly be. Look, they all died out. They died out here. They died out there. There's none there today. Uh, 